Welcome everyone to our webinar about lasers, cameras, and helicopters, a configuration for everyone. My name is Michael Sitar, and I will be your host for the next 30 minutes or so discussing in detail the various helicopter mounted remote sensing solutions that Rego offers professional surveyors and utility managers. Specifically, we will cover the available Regal LiDAR sensors themselves, what sensors we source for supporting imaging systems, directly georeferenced accuracy options, Regal Helipod solutions and the myriad of sensor configurations and orientations. And finally, we will wrap up with a brief look at the VUXIS system layout and pod to helicopter mounting solutions. Fundamentally, Regal is a manufacturer of high precision survey instrumentation, employing LIDAR time of flight ranging technology. We develop and support numerous LIDAR sensors for a variety of applications, each with a specific configuration that maximizes data quality and coverage. However, in the corridor segment, multi-sensor configurations are generally the norm. Not only is there a requirement for high resolution structural information associated with 3D coordinate measurement, but there is very often a visual component to determine things like insulator integrity, vegetation health, transformer hotspots, et cetera. that are not necessarily satisfied by LIDAR sensors alone. For that reason, we've developed a selection of helicopter-based sensor pods that can be retrofitted to accommodate a wide range of sensor configuration requirements, but that can also be readily installed on a number of helicopter platforms for maximum flexibility. This slide shows the densities that are possible when flying at maximum range with minimum laser emission rates over small diameter partial footprint targets, and in this case, two centimeter power line diameters. There is, of course, higher altitude capability when considering larger targets that fully intercept the emitted laser beam and result in ground footprint. And this can be observed in the detailed specification sheets for each sensor. There are handouts located in the GoToWebinar taskbar on your screen. You can download these at your convenience and review the specifications in detail at your leisure. Lower altitudes also permit higher emission rates and increasing point densities, which is not documented on this chart. We will look in more detail at some specific performance examples coming up. However, when it comes to sensor and pod selection, it is important to first consider application needs and requirements within the asset management framework, where asset management is really about the collection, measurement, interpretation, and actioning of collected information for safety, longevity, and efficiency. For example, the survey of many miles of transmission corridors may require a different set of data requirements than perhaps that of distribution lines. Therefore, proper sensor and parameter selection is imperative for maximum actionable value. In terms of LiDAR sensors of suitable size and performance for helicopter applications, there are several to choose from, each with their own inherent performance and application advantages. The first is the VUX 1 LR. Originally designed for UAV platforms, the LR is a long range variant that has significant application for the surveying of complex targets. It incorporates a rotating prism that has a 330 degree or optional 360 degree field of view, yielding a parallel scan line pattern on the ground. This global scan perspective, when combined with the forward motion of the aircraft, provides superior coverage of assets not only below the aircraft, but also above the horizon. And this is ideal for flying parallel, but offset to corridor right-of-ways for inspection work. The second sensor is our new VUX120. This sensor is both the same size and weight of the VUX1LR, uh, maybe slightly longer, but with double the emission rate of the VUX1LR and with a downlook FOV requiring a flight profile that is immediately above the asset. However, what makes this sensor really unique is its innovative multi-perspective view angle to the asset at plus minus 20 degrees, or sorry, plus minus 10 degrees fore and aft, as well as a nadir view angle across its large 100 degree lateral field of view. In short, a single rotation of the VUX120's rotating polygon yields three scan lines at different view angles. This is ideal for single pass coverages that map both the front and back side of vertical targets along the flight line, but also has a nadir look to penetrate dense foliage. Point distribution is not as uniform at the scan edges as that of the parallel scan pattern of the VUX1LR, but with the high point density from low altitude flying, this is generally a non-issue. 
And finally, the VUX 240 is the big brother of the VUX 120 with twice the altitude performance. Unlike the VUX 120, the 240 incorporates a rotating polygon with a slightly smaller 75 degree field of view, but with four scan lines per scan and rotation, all directed at Nader. Combined with a scan velocity that supports 400 lines per second and a tighter beam divergence, this sensor has become extremely popular for high density, long distance transmission work at speed. In the next few slides, we'll have a closer look at the performance capabilities of each sensor, assuming a fixed altitude of 150 feet above the ground and 50 knots. We will also assume that the laser pulses will strike a partial footprint target of only two centimeters in diameter, simulating a power line. Much longer range performance can be realized when considering full target interception of the beam footprint, as I mentioned earlier, but that is generally not the case in power line survey applications. Therefore, max range performance is necessarily lower for partial footprint returns. This slide includes a screenshot of Regal's RIE parameter software GUI that is used to establish sensor programming parameters based on sensor performance profiles and application collection requirements. To the far right, we can observe the parallel scan pattern on the ground. Scan speed has been adjusted to enable an X equals Y point distribution in the flight and cross-flight directions. Given the large global FOV and single faucet prism, only a single scan line per scanner mirror rotation is possible. This results in a relatively lower point density than that of a multifaceted downlook field of view sensor. However, for inspection work, this sensor still yields a point density of 80 points per meter squared at Nader at the planned 150 foot flight altitude and 50 knot flight speed. The VUX120 with its downlook field of view and much higher laser emission rate is capable of 120 points per meter square, at the same 150 foot AGL and 50 knot flight profile. If you look to the far right of the slide, you can notice the scan pattern of the VUX120. Data is semi-regular at Nader, but less so as the scan lines diverge from Nader. For right-of-way work where the primary interest is in the asset immediately below the aircraft, this may not be of consequence. However, it is important to be aware that there is about a 50% reduction in point density at the scan ends. From a target coverage perspective, the sensor can't be beat. It should also be considered for detailed inspection work where flight altitudes are limited. But know that being a downlook sensor, flight profiles are generally planned above the asset. The VUX240 is Regal's longest range performance compact LiDAR sensor for UAV and helicopter installations. With twice the laser output power of the VUX120, it is capable of much higher laser emission rates at equivalent altitudes, yielding over 300 points per meter squared at Nader from the same 150 foot flight altitude and 50 knot platform velocity. Notice the matrix scan pattern to the right. Of additional interest is the fact that the beam footprint is significantly smaller than the earlier sensors. This allows higher energy density within the laser beam footprint for improved detection and also provides improved target resolution at equivalent altitudes. When we compare the beam footprint size to the XY point distance, it becomes apparent that increasing the point density will further improve target resolution. This will remain the case until XY point distribution equals or exceeds the beam footprint diameter. With the extra range performance, it makes sense to be able to fly higher for greater right-of-way coverage. In this case, we have increased the flight altitude to, two, to, to 450 feet. We can increase the PRR to compensate and maintain the same point density at three times the altitude as the previous example. However, the limiting factor now is scan speed. Since we are forcing an X equal Y scenario in terms of point distribution, the scan is close to its maximum 400 lines per second. If we increase the laser emission rate further, we are only realizing improvement in, in the Y direction. The in-flight X direction cannot be increased further. Notice also the increase in spot size on ground as the altitude goes up. Now that the beam footprint is almost equal to the spot distribution, additional density does not necessarily amount to increased resolution.
Rego integrates two primary camera models with our VP1 and VPX pods. They're, uh, they are the Sony Alpha 7R4 and the Phase 1 IXM50 and IXM100 cameras. The Sony camera offers a 61 megapixel image with a similar pixel resolution to the Phase 1 IXM100 of around 3.5 microns. The primary advantage of the Sony cameras, in addition to price, is the shallow body, allowing much more installation flexibility in the limited space within the pod. However, unlike the Phase 1 cameras, the Sony cameras are not purpose designed for the airborne environment. Neither do they include the level of support that is available with the Phase 1 solutions. For airborne acquisitions, this is a key consideration. Given these cameras are used for metric mapping purposes, Regal offers an intrinsic calibration service to enable high accuracy performance from an otherwise consumer product. The entire sensor solution is then flown to determine an extrinsic foresight calibration for each sensor and the IMU misalignment angles determined. From a data storage perspective, there are two options. One can write the, the data direct to an SD card or it can be transferred via USB to a lap, laptop following flight. Phase 1's IXM50 100 megapixel camera bodies are lighter and smaller than their IXM RS series designed for wide area mapping initiatives. This is a necessary requirement uh, to minimize the weight and keep the entire sensor suite below the 50 pound limit for some heli mounts. It is important to note that the pixel size of the IXM100 is the same as that of the larger IXM RS150 at 3.76 microns. And the difference is really the larger frame size of the IXM RS150. Therefore, image resolutions remain the same, but area coverage rates obviously differ. An intrinsic calibration is available directly from phase one. Alternatively, Rego offers a similar calibration service for the phase one cameras, but also an extrinsic calibration associated with the Boresight flight. Unlike the Sony cameras, the phase one offers also offers a dedicated computer controller that runs a Windows OS to command and control the cameras, but more importantly, to stream the camera data to removable drives. LiDAR data from the Regal VUX scanners can also be streamed to the same drive system, enabling a centralized storage system for all data. Similarly, data from co-mounted Sony cameras could also be streamed but to the IX controller. Here's an example of ground sample distances that can be realized with the IXM100 and a 35 or 80 millimeter lens for nadir and oblique image collection at around 500 feet. Altitudes much lower with this camera can start to impact image smear. And so the IXM50 megapixel cameras might be a better solution for low altitude inspection work where the sensor pixel size is larger. To accommodate different application requirements and therefore varying flight profiles, three versions of Ap Aplanix OEM AP products for direct georeferencing are offered. The AP20 is an entry-level system with a lightweight MEMS IMU, typically associated with lowest, lowest altitude short flight line surveys. For higher altitude surveys where angular errors translate to larger errors on ground, the AP50 is an excellent option. However, for maximum performance under all conditions and the very best accuracies on long flight lines, the AP60 with fiber optic gyros and extremely low heading drift error is the preferred solution. The advent of post-processed RTX has largely, eliminated, has largely eliminated the need for local ground station deployment. This subscription-based service leverages a global real-time GNSS correction technology that's unique to Trimble and has eliminated the logistical challenges of ground crew deployments, relegating them almost entirely to GCP collection for survey accuracy control. Uh, what's of, of note with the Trimble RTX is it consists of a dedicated network of reference stations which track GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and other satellite constellations, and is based on a real-time computation of precise ephemeris and atmospheric delay models, enabling accuracy approaching real-time kinematic solutions, but significantly without local reference stations. We have also introduced recently the ability to connect a meteorological sensor for on-the-fly sensor recording 
to an internal meteorological file within the Rye Acquire software. The data from this sensor is then used to correct the range information in the following post-processing effort within our Rye Process production software suite. To enable the seamless control and monitoring of all these sensors, an integration scheme is required. For this purpose, Regal has developed a flexible VUXIS computer integration system, which consists of a suite of cameras, LIDAR sensor, GNSS INS system, a flight management system, and a compact computer unit. The computer unit, or CU, combines an OEM GNSS IMU board stack from a Planex with a camera trigger and synchronization unit and necessary processing electronics. The CU sources power from a power distribution box, or PDB, and routes communications via an Ethernet hub built into the PDB. Total power consumption is relatively low with peak current draw under 15 amps for a three camera system with computer, high power VUX240, and maximum accuracy AP60 GNSS INSS system. To house the VUXIS in an instantly deployable solution, Regal has come up with a flexible platform or pod concept with a number of variants, including the VP1 and the VPX1. Depending on desired LiDAR and configurations, camera configurations, an appropriate platform is selected. Each platform consists of a carbon fiber cover that surrounds an internal aluminum frame. The whole assembly is vibration dampened with spring isolators to minimize or eliminate vibration frequencies from being translated to the data collection system. To enable maximum platform compatibility, the pods are designed to be below 20 kilograms in total payload weight. A single cable bundle is hard mounted to the pod and an extension harness is used to allow the pod assembly to remove uh, quickly for storage. Hard mounts exist on the pods to support a GPS antenna, However, it's recommended that these be installed somewhere on the helicopter top surfaces or tail structures to reduce GPS shadowing and signal loss. Each pod is compatible with the Airfilm's DT1 dovetail disconnect system for ease of installation and platform compatibility. Now, these next few slides will provide a quick look at the various sensor configurations that are possible with the VP1 and VPX. Um, these are extensible sensor platforms uh, assuming the smaller AP20 and AP50 uh, solutions from a Planix. First, let's consider the VP1 with the VUX1LR 1 NL, 1 for asset inspection sorties. In this case, a single Sony camera mounted at Nader positions the camera directly behind the VUX1LR. You can notice the GPS antenna mount on the top of the pod. For knolls or pole mounted installations, this may be a suitable solution, but again, a top surface installation is preferred. The second configuration adds another Sony camera, but this time with an achromatic chip for four band image collection. Side oblique image collection is a popular option for asset inspection sorties. In this first example, the cameras are mounted in opposing lateral angles relative to the flight direction. More commonly, a Nader camera is included. And the oblique angles themselves can be pre-selected and alternative focal length determined for preferred coverage and GSD requirements. The larger phase one IXM cameras means that there is less space inside the pod for multiple camera options. However, this continues to be a popular configuration for more than one IXM camera, the VPX pod has been designed to accommodate this. In this slide, we now transition to the high accuracy AP60 GNSS INS solution from Aplanix. The AP60 has a much larger IMU than that of the lesser accuracy AP20 and AP50 products. Therefore, a phase one IXM camera is not an option in this configuration. Here are two available configurations using the Sony cameras with the AP60. And while side oblique cameras are certainly an option, there is definitely a need for forward aft oblique solutions as well. And we are actively working on a, a new variant of the VP1 that will provide additional configuration options within the VP1 sensor platform using the Sony cameras. Now, like the VUX 1LR, Regal has also recently made available a VP1 pod configuration for the VUX 240. 
providing another sensor configuration solution for airframes commonly used for power line survey. However, due to the larger size of the sensor, the VP1 is not able to accommodate the number of camera configurations as is available with the VUX 1LR. In this case, a single phase one IXM50 or 100 megapixel camera and possibly a FLIR towel for thermal imagery. Pause options are limited to the AP20 or AP50. Given the popularity of the VUX240 for corridor applications, a new pod was necessary to be able to be able was necessary to be able to accommodate the the, uh, the the new camera options. During design, the pod was expanded to also support an AP60 high accuracy pod system with the larger IMU. Uh, but now we can install uh, the larger at Phase One cameras as well. Surveyors have fewer limitations res with respect to camera models and GNSS, INS accuracy needs with this new sensor platform and pod. The VPX is available with a similar selection of camera options to the VP1, depending on application requirements. However, given that the VPX1 is designed for the larger VUX240, side oblique imaging systems are not included. Instead, four aft obliques are available in plus minus 30 and plus minus 20 degree installation angles, depending on camera models selected. If a four band imaging system is desired, then the aft oblique camera must be substituted for a second nadir camera. For vegetative health management in grow in or fall in analyses, this configuration is ideal. Unless there is, a is, there is compatibility with existing FAA approved helicopter mounting systems, sensor pod installations can be a challenge. The key to solving this has been the purpose design of the pods to retrofit with the DT1 dovetail system from airfilm camera systems. This acts as a quick connect system between the pod and the helicopter mount. Basically, the lower block is affixed to the sensor pod and the upper block is affixed to the helicopter mount. The payload then slides from the side to the upper block until the locking teeth are aligned. The, the, then simply tighten the teeth and lock them in place with the provided spring pin. In this way, the pod can be disconnected and removed from the aircraft in a matter of seconds. This system allows for a plug and play helicopter installation on all sorts of platforms that are compatible with the Meeker heli mounts. These include the Bell 206, 407, 429s and their variants, the Airbus Eurocopter AS350, 355, Augusta 109 and 119s, H125s, MD369, 500 and 600 helicopters, and Robinson R44 and R66 platforms. The VP and VPX1 pods are compatible with a tremendous number of platform options requiring uh, little to no internal cabin modifications. So, in conclusion, Regal offers numerous LiDAR sensor options suitable for helicopter installation, depending on specific application and data density coverage requirements. Integration of both off-the-shelf and OEM cameras for high-resolution applications, choice of a plant exposition orientation systems, depending on accuracy requirements, extensive choice of configuration options for maximum application suitability, and finally, a one-stop shop for a fully supported heli sensor solution with expanding service and support facilities in Winter Garden, Florida. And thank you, everyone. At uh, this time, if there's uh, any questions, uh, I'll certainly uh, stick around to, to answer. Uh, at this point, I don't have all that many. So one of the questions is, do you have plan or experience with auto gyral stabilization for VUX 120 or VUX 240? Um, so at, at this time, we do not. Um, these are, uh, as you notice, these are fixed mount installations, um, but there are numerous vendors out there that actually um, design uh, and field gyro stabilized solutions that can um, incorporate uh, some of the Regal LiDAR sensors into, into their payloads. Um, and that includes the, the folks uh, uh, from uh, Lead Air down in uh, uh, Kissimmee, Florida. Are all these systems ENOHD safe? Um, so yes, actually the, the first two sensors, the VUX 1LR and the VUX 120 are actually class one sensors. Um, so there really is no minimum altitude requirement and they can run at uh, full power uh, with the aircraft motion um, and, and be operated in an eye safe manner. 
Now, the VUX240 is, in fact, a Class 3R sensor. Um, so there is a minimum uh, range uh, uh, safety requirement. Um, but in that case, that sensor, it, it's only about uh, a meter or two. So it is also quite low. Um, however, it's important to understand that uh, uh, the VUX240 um, is a more powerful sensor and there is um, uh, a safety component associated with it in terms of uh, safe operation. And at this time, I don't have any additional questions. Um, so uh, uh, later on, uh, please send me an email. Um, I am available uh, at uh, any time through, uh, through the Regal website, uh, or you can email me at uh, msitar at uh, regalusa.com. I want to thank everyone for their time and uh, wish you a great day.